debates and decisions that are shaping our continent now in Europeans. In Grottaglie, a small city in southern Italy, ceramics is not only an ancient craft, but is part of the space age. The name of this place is based in the land, crossed by ravines, where the people sheltered against invaders in the many caves, grottos, the namesake of Grottaglie. Many centuries later, the territory was to suffer a plague of high unemployment. It had become a bastion of steel-making, but restructuring in the 1990s cut the socio-economic ground out from under it. Ceramics feeds local pride. Listen to a local artist. There's nothing as modern as ceramics. Pieces of spaceships made for the moon and now perhaps heading to Mars are made in ceramics. Between the pastures and olive trees came a transformation as wizards of heavy manufacturing arrived. If something new comes to Grottaglie, we're glad. Welcome. The Italian high technology firm Alenia has a 40 year partnership with Boeing behind it. The two companies decided to put down stakes together in Grottaglie and build fuselage parts for the very latest Boeing model, the Dreamliner. Alenia produces two sections of the Boeing 787. It's the new airplane that Boeing has launched in the 200 to 250 passenger class. This is a big deal. The biggest these two companies have ever signed, worth more than a billion euros. Here in the Grotelia facility we produce this part of the fuselage. Here on the wing and also in the rear, including the door. We make this part here, the horizontal stabilizer, in Foggia. In Italy's deep south, the country's economic Achilles heel, what made this such an attractive prospect? Alenia said the wide open space was a key consideration, and then national and European Union subsidies helped make the pasture green, helped to build infrastructure. Taranto province is on Rome and Brussels' economic crisis list. Euronews asked Iran for official figures on the public money provided to lure the big industrial fish, but they were hard to pin down. All the national agencies set up to encourage business would say was that 68 million euros was given for machinery in the plant. To host the 787, we had to build a hangar of 70,000 square meters. That's as big as 15 football fields. This airplane is wrapped in carbon fiber innovation. More than half a Dreamliner is carbon fiber. Mixed with resin, it is taped 90 times around a drum. Then the whole thing is slipped into an oven for a light melting at 180 degrees Celsius. The other big innovation here is a technology called the one-piece barrel. As the American term indicates, this technology lets us build the barrel in one shot, together with the parallel frames. The hangar, as vast as 15 football fields, is actually the largest pressurized clean room in Europe, its proud owners say. No dust gets in. Temperature and humidity are rigorously controlled, warmer than 18.9 degrees Celsius, and the carbon strips stretch too much. More than 60% air humidity risks an unstable wrap. After the ceramic bake, a saw puts holes in the shell for the windows. Alenia Composite's chief executive officer owns the first pop-out. I have one of them. I took the very first. A few days after we produced the first fuselage, they started to say Boeing got the first window. Well, no, it didn't. I certified this one. That's the signature of the head engineer. As the machinery got public money, local upgrades did too. The local and regional administrations made the runway longer. 
The large cargo freighter needed it, especially long. The runway was extended from 1,700 to 3,500 meters. The first freighter arrived in March to pick up fuselages for assembly in Everett, Massachusetts. Seven Italy-USA flights per month are planned for next year. A local administrator talks about the taxpayer's contribution. Indirect investments by the public administration amount to roughly 150 million euros. The Grotalier factory is also presented as beneficial for educational purposes. Links have been created between universities and the facility, especially with the Polytechnic in Bari, the regional capital. It's the only institute of its sort in the south of Italy. Boeing's investment in Grotillier has brought studies and research. Of course, the region welcomes investment. 20 kilometers from Grotalier lies Taranto, the provincial capital. Last year, it went bankrupt. It was the second time in the history of the Italian Republic after Naples in the 1990s that a city asked the central government to declare a financial state of emergency. Debts of 750 million euros weigh heavily on the 210,000 inhabitants. This local administrator looks at the bankruptcy phenomena in a southern Italian context. Explaining it to someone from Iceland or to a German seems to be very difficult. Control mechanisms simply went off. Nobody checked up on anybody else. The mayor didn't oversee the financial controller. The financial controller didn't keep track of the auditors. The justice system didn't monitor the financial controllers. And last but not least, the markets controlled nothing. We should think about that. Rating agencies downgraded Taranto only after the bankruptcy, when the city was already economically dead. It's like declaring someone deceased three months after the funeral. Grotalier looks like a different picture, but Alenia works with both America's Boeing and Europe's Airbus. Locally, the people involved say there is nothing odd about a European government helping a US enterprise, which is the Airbus consortium's foremost competitor. There is no conflict of interests at all. An enterprise works for different customers. It's a strategy. Our territory is not only open for investments by European companies or by enterprises well liked by our government. That would mean being a closed territory. While Alenia and Boeing set up in southern Italy with public subsidy assistance, Airbus has fired workers in France. The Dreamliner development in Grotalier cannot help but keep hopes aloft.